Good morning, everybody. <laughs> My name's Grace. I'm uh, Vanna Willemiel on Instagram, Ravelry and Periscope. I am welcome to my little podcast. It, this is a podcast about uh, knitting and a lot of spinning. <laughs> it's just happened and I can't stop myself. Uh, yeah. Um, and today I'm going to talk about my FOs, my finished objects, my half finished objects. Sorry, my notes are down here. I'll put them here so that I'm a little bit. Yeah. Uh, some half finished objects, some whips some spinning that I've done um, and my adventure to the spinning guild a guild like how old timing is that fabulous and also I'm just going to talk a little bit at the end about some of my experiences trying to move towards zero waste if anybody's interested in that you can hang on till the end first off Hello, how are you? How you been good? It's been a week, so this one hopefully will be a short one again, which would be awesome because it's only been a week. I'm quite enjoying these little weekly ones, even though I'm not producing massive finished objects and stuff, but I think I'm still doing quite interesting things. So let me know, uh, do you prefer every two weeks and me to have a finished object or do you prefer every week and it's just a bit shorter? with more babbling about random stuff. <laughs> this is Babbles Travelling Yarns. Oh, speaking of, uh, I am an Irish girl who lives in Sydney. Um, I am travelling around. I've got two, I've, got, I've only got two more months here in Sydney. How crazy is that? And then I'm off again. I booked my flight back to Perth. And um, yeah, we got a really good deal on the flights. Like it was only $250 or something to fly back to Perth like the week before Christmas, which is such a good price. Because Perth is like, it's a five hour flight. I think we leave on t at 10 o'clock on um, 10 o'clock at night and then we arrive at 11 o'clock. <laughs> That's because Perth is three hours ahead. I don't know exactly. It's a long flight because Australia is a big place, large place. Anyway, right, let's start, shall we? Let's get on to the knitting. I'm sure I have something else to say, but I just can't. Blech. It don't matter none. Right, so some FOs. <laughs> I'm still counting these as FOs, okay? I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> so this is my little hand spun blanket. I'm showing you the back, that's no good. My little hand spun blanket. Now I'm calling these FOs because I've spun it from fibre and I've knitted it. Like that's like two things that finish. Anyway, so uh, this was my first one, second one, and this was my third one. So these three, this one, this one, and this one uh, came from the little samples of wool that came with the wheel. So they're my first ones. This one was a sample of the merino fleece that I that was given to me, um, oh, it's so squishy, <laughs> that I was spinning on my drop spindle before I got the wheel and then I applied it on the wheel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so beautiful. I, I wish you could feel this. Look, feel it. Put it against your face. Oh, isn't it the squishiest, softest thing alive? Anyway. So then I started, um, so I went to uh, the Fibre Fest in Singleton, which is part of the Knitting Guild. I think the spinners went as well. There's two guilds. I think there's the Inner City Sydney Knitters Guild, and then there's the Hand Weavers and Spinners Guild New South Wales. And I want to be involved in both of them. Kind of am. Um, but when I went to the Fibre Festival in Hunter Valley in Singleton, I bought this, um, now you're going <laughs> to, at the end, I'll be very cross with myself for buying everything in plastic, but anyway. Um, so this company is Felt Fine, and they have an incredible website, and I got uh, two bags of merino mixed bags, and they are these little bumpy bump bump bumps, these little 
Yoki. They're so cute. You get like 10 in each bag for $24, which is a really good price. If you're in Australia, do it. Um, and they're 25 grams each. So, four of these, like you've got 100 gram, 100 gram balls. And they're, they're, they're wound really, really tight, so they're super dense. Anyway, so this was the first one that I, oh, it wasn't. Yes, it was, because it feels different to these ones. So it was a green that I picked out, and I was going to mix it with something else. Flight path day! Every day is flight path day. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> it's just the way it is. <laughs> um, so this is my, and you can see it's a little bit thick and thin, but I think I'm getting more consistent, don't you? Like, maybe it's because this is plied with another colour that it doesn't seem so consistent, but that looks... And it's really soft, but I think that's something to do with the fiber prep. And then this one. Oh my god. This one. I, I was showing you backwards again. I bought this fiber in House of Wool. No, it wasn't House of Wool. It was, yes, it was House of Wool in Blackheath. Oh, it's. I put a picture up on my Instagram of it in a skein and it's just, it photographs exactly like it feels. It's like really soft sheen, buttery goodness. It's, I don't know if you can see the sheen on this one. You could, probably could if it was, um, I don't know. No, it's, and it's so consistent. Look at this. Look, all the holes are kind of the same. <laughs> it's all to do with fibre prep. I need to get better at fibre prep on my own. My own yarn thingamajiggers. Sorry, I'm just dangling around that little stitch marker there, mate. Stop wiggling. It's cute, right? Cute. Anyway, so the rest of the bowl, I, I caked it up because I had to use it immediately, you know. You know the way it be. It's a little bit grayer. My lighting situation is always pretty terrible, but that's okay. And I'm in love with it. I kind of felt a bit sad using a little bit in the cozy memory blanket because it's kind of squished out now. But um, and, uh, I really want to make it like a shawl or something with this. It's only, now I've started to measure how much I'm getting out of it and I'm doing just a little bit of calculations uh, this was the teal so this is 184 meters and there was well there was anyway now there's less uh, 83 grams in total and I figured out there's a word in the world I did not realize existed when I was putting this into Ravelry um, Oh, it's so soft. <laughs> uh, it's called grist. <laughs> That's a terrible word. Who? Who? Anyway, so it's it's basically how many meters are in the weight of it. So it turned out to be like two hundred and eleven meters per hundred grams, which apparently is like an Aran weight. But this is not an Aran weight. It's like, I mean, it might vary. It might vary, but I don't think it's an iron weight. It's maybe a DK. I was thinking a sport weight because when it knit up, it was actually, I had to add, I had to add like, cause this one was 20, so 45 stitches to make this square to start off. So you pick up um, 22 and then one for the middle and then 22 on the other side. This one I had to pick up 24 on one side and one in the middle and then 24. So that was maths, mathematics, uh, something. So 48, yay! No, 49, it's 49 isn't it? Because it, it has to be uneven because you're doing a, a, a double decrease in the middle. That's how I, I knit my squares. So I pick up however many looks like it needs to be. Um, and then sometimes I, I pick up how, however many. And then on this one, I was like, I needed to go back and pick up another like two in between. 
and then um, I do a central double decrease by slipping two knitwise, knitting the next one and passing the two slip stitches over. And then on the way back, I curl that center double decrease so you get this nice little ridge. Finally figured it out. It took me ages to figure out how to do that, but I really like the back as well. Just the way that they, and I'm weaving in my ends as I go. Don't know how long that's gonna last, but I, because I can't just keep, every time I make the yarn, I stop and I knit it in, you know what I mean? So, but I can't make it fast enough. So I can, I have the time to weave in the ends and it's not such a big deal. And with hand spun, when you weave in the ends, you can't even see because it all turns into a big giant mess. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, um, this has just moved into my spinning now. I'll talk about the rest of my spinning after. There's more. <laughs> so, onto my knitted objects. So, my driftwood tea. I mean, that, that was knitted. That's fine. But my driftwood tea, I have half finished. <laughs> oh, this bad boy. Right, so this is the uh, Driftwood Tea from Interweave magazine. And this is the sample that I'm doing for my local wool shop. Uh, it's the Driftwood Tea by Mercedes Tarasovich Clark. And it's that little picture there. I don't know if you can see. Focus, I need to just tap on the tank. Maybe you can see that. There's a little lace pattern. Ah, you'll see in a second. <laughs> so I'm using Inez yarn, uh, which is their lilac colorway. Lila. And uh, Morrison's Sons Inez five ply, which actually only has two plies. Australian um, yarn sizing uh, is different. They go by plies. So two plies lace, three plies light fingering, four plies fingering, five plies something. Six plies sport, eight plies DK, ten plies something else. Worsted. So it's really pretty. This yarn is actually, looks really really nice. Um, just checking for Java's witnesses. They came by, right? They came by three times last week and James happened to be home. And they were like, oh, where is Grace? Like, we came on Monday. Does she normally get Mondays off? And James was like, no, no, not always. I was like, they were really surprised. Because I'm living in sin with my boyfriend in a flat. Oh, my God. Anyway, sorry for anybody who, who is offended by that. But it's not your life. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> anyway, it is. I love this lace pattern. It is beautiful. So I finished the back piece. Is this the back piece or the front piece? Yes, it's the back. So this is the back piece. I don't know how the front piece is any different. I don't actually think it is. Um, and But you just sew them together. So that's the little shoulder bits. So I seam them to the other side. Now the pattern, I would have loved to change the pattern in a number of ways but because it was a sample I thought I would have to do it exactly right I could have I suppose I could have you know rang and asked her listen do you mind if I do it this way or that way I would have loved to do it in a round because then I would be you know halfway finished instead of having to start another thing you know I'm just like this is why I don't do second socks I don't do socks individually because I have to do them at the same time otherwise I just never because I finished oh well I finished this and blocked this and everything on Thursday. It's now Monday and I haven't cast on the other side. <sighs> I will do that today. I must do that today. Otherwise, it will never get done. And it, I, there is a deadline on this. So I like the back as well. Look, I just love the way uh, lace just makes me happy. Lace. Anyway, I'm on a lace kick at the moment with my Jenny, Jenny cardigan. I am desperate to get back into cables. But I think I'm going to have to wait until I'm in a warmer climate, or a colder climate, to do cables because it's getting hot down here. It's springtime. There's a tree out the window, right? And it's completely, it looks like, it looks completely dead. And then there's no leaves on it. There's just loads of flowers. Just the flowers come before the leaves, apparently, on this tree. Everything's backwards down here. Even the magpies. Magpies are backwards. Look them up. Australian magpies versus European magpies. 
they're backwards. Anyway, so I used uh, almost three balls in this and I was only given five balls. So I think I might need another ball to finish the front because I've only two more balls left. Look at that lace, isn't that pretty? She's smiley. So I'll see how I go and I'll rock up and be like, sorry, I need another one. They calculated it and they actually gave me more than I thought I needed. So I'm thinking maybe my gauge is off or I think my, my row gauge might be off but my side to side gauge isn't. It's not exactly like it's gonna be for fitting anybody, it's just for the amount of yarn it needs to use. I'm, I'm just knitting the smallest size. Um, yeah, but I this yarn was super lumpy bumpy before I blocked it and it's beautiful. So someone asked me why I blocked it, even though it wasn't finished and seamed. And I was like, because I just wanna pretend that it's finished. <laughs> Cause I'm not, the biggest fan of alpaca and the yarn is 30% alpaca, isn't it? 20% alpaca and 70% wool and 7% acrylic and 3% viscose. If anybody's interested, <laughs> um, and I am just, I hate curling and I wish I was doing it in the round. And also, oh yes, I was gonna say, I also wish that I'd, that I could have changed the sleeves now the sleeves are the little band there is just a little garter ridge three stitches across once you get to this stage and I wish that I could have picked it up and done it up this way because it's rolling look and all the pattern notes on Ravelry say the sleeves roll like crazy it looks really frumpy so yes but pattern says to do that. I don't know. Anyway, it's done now. So, and it's like, it's not like I'm going to be wearing it. But I would like to give something. Oh, I'm not going to go back and do it again. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, um, oh, I love this lace pattern though. It's a beautiful pattern. But if I was to do it again, I would do it in a cotton or linen yarn possibly yeah cotton or linen just to have that nice drape and I would also um, do the sleeves differently I would do it in the round I would knit it in the round which is very easy to do apparently I believe them as well people can say that and I would also pick up the sleeves and knit out a couple of in uh, maybe an inch just to stop them rolling that's all so that's some advice for anybody thinking about doing this pattern I would thoroughly recommend it it is beautiful like this lace pattern is written so perfectly. It's really, really nice. And the actual t-shirt design looks really pretty. Um, oh my God, I it. It's just really basic, but it's lovely. And I think I'd love to have one in a drapey, kind of um, cool yarn. It's just really pretty shape, you know? It's just straight, there's no waist shaping or anything. Maybe it's prettier on, the, on smaller people. Small people, try that. Larger people, I think we need something else. But that's it, and I'm using high highers. <laughs> oh, no way, I have cast it on. I have cast it on, look, look. Look, I cast it on, lads. What am I saying? I'll put that down now. I feel like I've done that job. Oh my God, I'll knit it again later. <laughs> anyway, next. Uh, this is supposed to be a fast episode. Come on, Grace. Come on. Socks. Socks. Socks, 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 socks. I'm quite liking these now. I'm really enjoying these. So these are, I, I'd only cast on like one part of the cuff and then a little tiny little blip of the second cuff. So I joined them in the round. I joined them, or not in the round, I joined them together on the one needle. And uh, this is Arnie and Carlos. Where am I looking there? That's not where it is. It's down here somewhere. There we go. Regia, Regia, Arnie and Carlos design line. And I believe this is called Fall Night. And you can tell that it really does look like Fall Night. I'm right this time. I was calling the other socks the Summer Night. I was calling that Fall Night the entire time I was making them. What the fluke? So I've decided to make these for my brother. And I've also decided to do a rib pattern in there. So every ten, every 10 stitches I do a purl stitch which looks cute but look at this look at this I love the inside of these like love it look oh that's not very good look how cute 
is that? Can you make reversible socks? Like, where do you weave in the ends with the reversible socks? How cute is that? Focus on that. Nope, no focusing happening. Oh, I just love it. I really like it. <laughs> anyway, so nothing else really. Um, this is uh, West Yorkshire Spinners in the cardamom colorway that I'm doing the the, the cuffs, heels, and toes in. And it, I was kind of matching it to this color here, but it's very close to the orange, so it's not quite exactly. Well, it'll be fine when, when it's all done. It'll be fine. So this is the the yarn. I've got two. These are two 50 gram balls. And I'm keeping it in my amazing sock bag. I love this bag so much from Carmen. And this is uh, created by Travel Walking in the Air. And it's like squishy and soft and like quilted. So, plane! If I don't hear the plane, uh, it's because I'm immune to it. I used to live by train tracks and um, You'd hear them, I, I, I buy a train track, so I used to live probably half a mile away from them, and you could hear the trains coming all the way and going all the way. But my friend who lived right next to the train tracks, you could hear them for about 10 seconds. I mean, it was really loud, 10 seconds, but that's it. And it would like, you, it wouldn't even bother you, because you just get over it, you're right. <laughs> Done. As opposed to us, it was like, for like 10 minutes, um, because I had to slow down to go through the crossing or whatever. That's nothing to do with knitting. Get back to it, Grace. Um, yes. Okay, so that's all the knitting I've been doing. I've been working on my little doggy jumper, but I had to rip it out a couple of times because the sleeve, we got sleeve measurements wrong, and then I was like, oh, I put the sleeves in the wrong place, like the little leg holes. So literally, I'm back to the exact same place that I was on that. Now, more spinning. So, you know, I was talking about these um, kind of little bumpy bumps. So I got these 10 different colors and I was thinking of just basically, I got the whole thing to do something like this, which was essentially just to fill out my, this one's still wet, I'm sorry. I meant to, I left it in all night. So this is two colors. I split the balls in half because I only need, for my hand spun blanket, I only need about actually about 15 or 16 um, grams so I split the balls in half and then ply them together so I still have some actually I'll show you so they started out like this and then they plied together like this which is pretty so this is just good I was gonna just I wanted lots of different colors so I could just put it into my hands bone blanket that's all I wanted and then and then and then I got an idea. I was like, but I, but I love it. I love this color. Um, yeah, so I did this. So this is 100 grams. Uh, how many meters? 100 grams, 112 meters. So this is very thick. And this is my first attempt at Navajo plying, which Thank God I did crochet because it's pretty much exactly like a chain stitch and crochet. Um, and it's very overspun, way overspun. I mean, it's still kinky and I let it soak and I let it dry. Maybe Navajo plying needs, because oh, I don't know if you can see here over this side, it's still quite kinky. Kink, 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 kink. Um, maybe it needs a weight on it, but I don't want to, I don't want it to lose the spring that it has. Not that it has much, but it does have a little bit. Yay. Um, so this is my first three ply, which is probably a deep. No, it's definitely a worsted, I think. I mean, evened out. I need to do the, the wraps per inch. Yoki, my bob thing. Does it actually question? Does it matter if how how wide your wraps per inch thing is it just has to be an inch wide it doesn't matter how because people say you can just wrap it around a pencil and just measure an inch and other people say wrap it around a ruler but i'm like but you're not measuring the length of it are you you're just measuring the width of it oh yeah okay i've worked it out never mind question answered <laughs> but yeah so this one goes from this beautiful like 
blush color to this coral color. Ooh, this is not very good. So from blush to coral to this kind of really burnt orange color and then to this no I suppose that's probably just an orange and this one is the burnt orange then so you can see let me see if I can get them lined up in a row ah I like that so that's what they look like and they're just such beautiful colors and I was thinking about um, maybe doing, I think there's too much here for a hat to get all the colours in. So I was thinking about doing a shawl, like a big cosy hand spun shawl with colour changes in it. Um, so yeah, I think it needs a little bit, I think it's a little bit wet still down here so I won't skein it up just yet. But um but I'm in love with those colors. Then, then I saw this. Um, so I got loads of, I got the autumn leaves kit and I also got pretty pastels. Um, I don't remember which one is which now because I've mixed them all up, but I saw this and I was like, um, I want that in my life right now. I don't know which, where, that's such a funny, I don't know if this will work, but hey ho, let's just go with that. <laughs> Look at those colours. Like mustard rainbow. So this is one, two, three, four, f okay, so 175 grams in that. So if I spin it fine enough and I Navajo ply it, I could possibly get enough for a shawl. <laughs> but I have to spin it fine enough. I have to get good enough to spin that super fine. And with these, it's actually incredibly easy to do because the fiber is prepared so, so well. I have found that my best results come from... Um, spinning from the fold which is where you get I'll just use, use this one use this one it's probably easier to see um as you get a bit from here just the end um and you just take off a staple length so you hold it kind of far enough away so that's the staple length ish give or take it's a little bit long and you wrap it over your finger like this and then you just pull out a section here on the so this little section gets pulled in by the spinning wheel once you've attached it to the the leader or the yarn that's already doing so it kind of grabs all these wispy little hairs and then just kind of just sucks it in sucks it in and then i find that i'm so i do the long draw from the fold that's for some reason getting me maybe i'm just impatient because it's not getting me the most, most consistent yarn so when I first started spinning on the wheel, I play, I um, I got a class by J.C. Boggs Fisher, who is the editor of Ply magazine, and her class was from worsted to woolen, which is a fantastic class. Anyone who is interested in spinning should definitely look into that. I think it's only like eighteen dollars or something when I bought it. Um, there's always offers going on anyway, so just pop this away again but um her class was fantastic and it took you through all the different ways of um drafting drafting which is the main i think i need fiber prep and drafting is where i need to work on and then i'll move on to how i'm an over spinner at the moment <sighs> so anyway there's always but i'm learning this so so much all the time that um, I really don't mind if I'm a bit rubbish because I don't care because it's great um, so now I'm going to move on to talk about the spinning guild which I went to so I have these loads of yarn loads of fleece I have three bags of fleece effectively from three different sheep 
and it was overwhelming me a little bit. I don't know if you could tell from my last episode, but it was overwhelming me, the amount that I had to do to get it to the yarn stage, not even knit it, like just, just get it to yarn because it's pretty dirty and I need to wash it. Like it takes a whole day of washing um, because you've got to wash it a couple of times and it, it, it's an investment, it's a lot of time. And then you've got to prepare it. So you've got to take it like apart, take it all, all the bits and bob bits and things. And then I was hand carding it, which was just really difficult on my hands and my arms. And I, I think I was just overwhelmed by the amount. So I decided to go uh, to the spinning guild and I moved my days that I work around so I could get off to on the Thursday to go to their open day or they're they're open every Thursday in Burwood if anyone is in Sydney pop along they are so nice I emailed them before just to let them I was coming and just to double check that they had hand, uh, they had drum carders and boy do they have drum carders they have everything everything so I got one and the difference is like oh my god I can make so much in so little so I still can only make one bat a day, but one bat a day is way better than five roll eggs a day. So I was originally making around this many roll eggs a day. That's all I could manage. Um, so yeah, it was a bit like, oh, you know, I'm never going to get through all this, please. Because this is only like 10 grams. Let me just check. I can't believe where I was without this. I had no weighing scales. What was I thinking? Okay, let me just... Let me see how much five is. 14 grams. Okay, 14 grams. This bad boy, which isn't the most perfect because I, I did leave in a lot of the stuff. I'm basically just kind of not being so precious because um, it just drives me a little bit insane. So this bad boy is... Thirty grams, so I'm basically I've doubled my, I've doubled my production. It's awesome, and it's so full. Most of this um, hasn't been properly washed, so I'm still spinning in the grease, which is actually quite difficult to work with. But you know, I'm get I'm just doing it <laughs> because I'm gonna wash it properly after it's spun, and. Um, yeah, hopefully it'll be fine. So I am so much closer to paying off my debt of having to spin enough yarn for two beanies for those three bags of yarn. And then I can finally get onto my own yarn. I'm so excited. So, so I, I joined the guild and then I rented the drum carter and then I turned around and I noticed, hey, that's a big pile of books you have there. They have the most incredible library I've ever seen. So I was like, oh my god. They had all the books that everyone's always talking about. And you know what? They're not normally in a normal library, are they, these books? They're, sort of, they're highly specialist. So I first got this book just for interest, Spin to Knit, which I found was really interesting. It only had a couple of um, plying techniques, and I knew most of what was in there already. Um, but but it, it has a really good section. <laughs> I found this really funny. I'm going to read this to you. Um, where is it? Uh, so it says, <laughs> um, mention you're learning to spin and garbage bags full of fiber magically appear out of nowhere, especially if you live in a suburban or rural area. That's exactly what happened to me. I'm not kidding. Try it. It's like letting your own personal spinning genie out of the bottle. <laughs> That's what happened to me. If anyone's interested, do it. I mean, obviously this might be only in areas like, you know, North America or Europe or Australia or New Zealand. You know, maybe in places like Singapore, uh, Fatima. I'm not sure that this will exactly work because <laughs> I don't think there's many sheep farms in Singapore do you <laughs> um but I thought that was hilarious so I read this book and they've got a couple of really interesting um patterns like she's knit her own hand spun jumper I was like oh I'd love to do that look how comfy that looks and rustic and like oh so 
Yeah, I'm loving this. And there's just, yeah, it's a really good book. I read it in like 10 seconds because I'm a fast reader. But And this is the first book that I've actually sat down to read in a while. Like, I normally am an audiobook person because I like to be doing something as I'm doing it. But it only took me a few minutes and I was just like... And they give out the skilled news every month. I've, I've opted to have it emailed to me instead of paper format, but they just handed this to me um, today uh, because of my aptitude towards zero waste. Then I found this. So it's Alice Starmore's first Fair Isle Knitting, Book of Fair Isle Knitting. And I saw this on the Fruity Knitting podcast. Um, OMG, you guys. Look at all these charts. Charts for days. And you can see how she does them. And they're just really such a great resource so I'm going to be copying them <laughs> I say copying I mean you, you we all get we all copy don't we so I need to after because I haven't done any work on my collar work sweater because I've just tried to be finishing off this yoki my body just because I feel like it's a it's a an obligation I feel like I've got a lot of obligation knitting and spinning going on I just need to get it done and then I'll be like free to do whatever um Yes, so I'm going to sit down today after I am uploading this podcast and I'm going to colour out some of these charts. I'm excited, are you excited? Hold me to it, okay, because I need to get that colour work sweater done because they're holding my needles for my, fair, for my featherweight cardigan and I printed off the featherweight pattern and I'm just dying to finish off the colour work sweater or at least get it to a stage where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And then, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm wondering, it's a lace weight yarn, maybe I should just do it on the Cubics, on the wooden Cubics, or the wooden Knit Pros. I break Knit Pros all the time though, I just don't want to risk it. But you know, they're made to be used. Anyway, so you can take out five books at a time, and that includes magazines. Magazines! Magazines! I'm so excited for a rib. I bought it the other day. I was like, But it's all going good, guys. I know it is. No, no pressure. I think they're working really, really hard at the moment. Anyway, so that's, um, oh, sorry, if you don't know, Rib Magazine is a magazine for um, men and men who love to knit and women are, and people who love to knit for them. Something like that. There's a really good tagline. Why did I get it wrong? Oh, well. And it's uh, it's a car, car, corroboration. That's not the word. Collaboration. <laughs> between um Devin from uh, he was Brian and Heath from the Handmade and Woolen podcast and our video cast and uh Eric from Sticks Plus Twine podcast and I'm so excited for it so I I managed to get all three issue well three issues of Ply the magazine for hand spinners which is edited by that woman who I did the craftsy class who was JC Boggs Fisher so I got the twist episode. I started reading it and I got completely lost. <laughs> I got the cotton episode, which because I'm really interested in trying to move towards more more fiber, fiber, uh, plant fiber yarns um, for reasons. <laughs> and also the worsted version. So I am really excited to read through these. I really need to read through them because I've got, I want to watch. I'm, I've only got two more months here in Sydney. I need to read the entire library. Uh, yeah. So I'm going on Saturday. They've got their uh, monthly meeting and they've got like a class going. Oh, I think it's a brioche class. It might be a brioche class. And I'm really interested in that. So I'm going to drag along some people. I just want to say... At the Guild, I met this amazing woman called Catherine Henry, and she is in charge of the Australian Rare Breed Sheep Project. So the Rare Breed Sheep Project is all about um, supporting rare breeds that, ha that, that haven't been, um, that aren't so commercially desirable, um, just to continue breeding them, to continue um, kind of making sure their wool is still available. And 
I love her cards. She got them from, I think it was Moo Cards, and she went to Bendigo with a friend of hers, and her friend actually um, did loads of these beautiful drawings. So if you want to find out more about the Rare Sheep, Australian Rare Breed Sheep Project, she has Facebook and a uh, Facebook and a um, web page and an Instagram, and the Instagram is Rare Breed Project. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Focus on it. It's completely backwards to me, but I know it's not. So yeah, it's fascinating. And she was such a lovely woman, and I hope I'm going to meet her again on Saturday. So. Yeah, so she said the best thing you can do for to support rare breeds um, is to buy their fleece. That's, that's basically it. Find somewhere that you can buy it and buy it. Because the more people buy it, the more people will um, invest in more diverse sheep breeds, which I agree with, really. Because um, just breeding sheep commercially for, for profit is... Um, it ends up in some serious health implications for sheep um, so really encouraging diversity in the sheep breeds and maybe looking at you know more um, wide-ranging sheep just allows them to be a little bit more genetically diverse I've been really getting out into the community and I've managed to it's really changed my entire trip down here to Australia I never thought that I would be this into spinning. Really spinning has been because I've gotten out into the community. And it's just made me, bring me brought me so much joy. I spun all day yesterday, happy as Larry. We did a whole uh, Game of, uh, we just finished Game of Thrones. James hadn't watched all of Game of Thrones and he loved it and I loved it because I have also been to Croatia where they filmed a lot of Game of Thrones and I kept seeing because I did the Game of Thrones tour if anyone's going to Croatia I could do the Game of Thrones tour same thing in Iceland and Northern Ireland if you're in Northern Ireland because they have incredible and Morocco I think they're in now they do a lot of marine in Morocco and I could just see like I could see all the different places that I'd been to and there was one place in the last in the last season I'm not gonna there's no spoilers or anything but they leave one port and they enter another port and they leave one port and that's the port that I actually, it, it was a port in Dorne and that, I went swimming there in that, just directly off that pier. I hopped off that pier after the guide had shown us because there was nobody there, like these empty places. Oh my gosh, it was so stunning. I brought my family there after, I, after I'd done the tour and we'd hopped off the pier and I was like, I was there. And then the port that they came into then, um, that was um, just below the city walls. And you can go kayaking from there. And I'm like desperate to go back and go again. Anyway, James kept getting annoyed at me because I was like, oh, I was there. Oh, I was there. Oh, I was there. He was like, shut up. <laughs> I want to go there too, okay? Stop making me jealous. So then after Game of Thrones ended, we were like, oh, bereft of medieval fantasy land dreams so then we just oh yesterday um we went down to um, well i went out and i bought a hdmi cable to connect up to james new computer so we could watch all of the lord of the rings and we did that all day yesterday we just blitzed it the extended versions of course so yes i'm kind of in a fantasy land of medieval world now I love it. Anyway, we've got to find another thing now because we finished that too. We're not going to watch The Hobbit. Let's not speak of The Hobbit. We shall not speak its name. Anyway. Oh, right. I was going to talk about a little bit about zero waste. Um, okay. So, zero waste is, I will say it, impossible right now in today's day and age. Um, zero waste to me means trying to reduce the amount of waste you send to landfill and trying to even reduce the amount of waste that you send to recycling, especially waste that is not as recyclable as you might think, aka plastic. Um, plastic can only be recycled once or twice if it actually is ever recycled in the first place. 
So plastic can't really be um, recycled to its to, to as good as it was, right? So what happens is um, it's always recycled down. The, the process that it uses, the, the plastic loses some of its bonds and it becomes less strong. So you might start out with something like, like the top of this, which is plastic, and then it might be recycled into, say, you know, the hard plastic that food is like cheap, the bottom of like a salad, you know, kind of a clamshell thing. And then it might be recycled again into that cling filmy top on food on like strawberries or something that really like light fine plastic and then you can't recycle it anymore and it just goes to landfill so it, it's not like a closed loop recyclable circle um so i try and reduce it as much as possible unless it is in something that is going to last hopefully forever <laughs> because plastic does last forever like it doesn't go anywhere plastic has only been around in the last for the last 50 years and it's gonna last for the rest of our lives our children's lives for you know hundreds if not thousands if not millions of years it's gonna be around so a lot of people think that um, Things like Tetra Packs and, you know, the paper coffee cups are recyclable or, are, you know, compostable or something, you know, they're not because they hold liquid and therefore they have to be plasticized on the inside. And it's that kind of useless plastic that it's used for. So plastic, like those paper coffee cups are not recyclable. They just go to landfill. People, you know, so... I just bought this lid actually the other day, which is a little sippy cup. I had one of those twisty cups. This is a clean canteen, by the way. It's a really nice little size. It's the size of, say, a medium latte, which is normally my, my, my drink of choice. And um, yeah, so I don't get takeaway coffee unless I have that with me. The thing about zero waste as well is you have to have everything with you all the time, which is why I fail. A lot of the time but I try not to um, I don't buy bottled water that's a silly thing it's 1,000 times more expensive than tap water and I try not to buy coffee cups and things like that um, sometimes people buy it for me which is you know really nice um, and I, I feel ungrateful saying no thank you take it away it's already bought you know so if I don't have any control over it, I don't really worry about it too much. Um, but if I can, I won't buy any vegetables in plastic. I won't buy, um, so I buy loose vegetables, which sometimes means that they're more expensive. But it also means that I don't fall to the buy one, get one free scam in which it just goes to rot in the fridge. So I end up saving money like that. I use everything in the fridge because I only buy like, oh, I just need one pepper, I'll just get one pepper, you know. I, I happen, it happens to be quite useful for me because I go by shops quite a lot on my way to work, away from work, and I go to lots of different places. So um, I can do that, which is really, really nice. It doesn't always work, of course. But like I said, it's a journey to zero waste. It's not, I, I started it about uh, two years ago. Yeah, around two years ago and on New Year's, I looked up, I, I saw a random post about this girl called Lauren Singer on um, Facebook or something and it said like this one jar is about the amount of rubbish that she sends to land, uh, that she has that can't be recycled or composted in two years or something. And it was incredible and I was like, I wish I could do that. And then I turned around and I went, why can't I do that? So I really, really went down the rabbit hole really fast. I managed to get like... It, it does involve a little bit of investment in the start because you're not, you know, I bought shopping bags that were, you know, canvas shopping bags or small little ones that you could fold and put in your put in your own bag. I got some utensils. I got uh, stainless steel straws because I do love my cocktails, but I don't like the straws that come with them. So I always carry that with me. And I forget. That's another thing I forget. I forget to tell them no straw when I'm ordering a drink. But anyway, um... So it's a lot of remembering and a lot of sort of managing to try and think about these sort of things. Um, I I lost a lot of weight <laughs> when I started it. 
because I couldn't buy any crisps or chocolate or you know rubbishy things all I could do was go into the shops and the fruit and veg section were the only with fruit and veg and the bread if I had my own bread bag um, were the only places or and jars and tins because you can recycle elastic or you can recycle glass and you can recycle tin so they were the only places that I used to buy. Like I used to just basically go down into the fresh veg section and then find the tin section and walk up that aisle and get out. So I used to not go down any of the any of the drinking uh, any of the drink aisles. You know the, the the soft drink aisles. None of the crisps. None of the chocolate aisles. None of it. It was great. I was making my own pasta. I was um, I would get like a giant Hessian sack of uh, rice from. Uh, the Indian shop down the road from me back in the UK um, it was brilliant and I lost so much weight because all I was eating was fresh veg rice potatoes and I started realizing that dairy products and meat were the biggest problems when it came to zero waste as in like I just could not find like I could go to the butcher and ask them to put it in my my container but it was a lot of hassle and a little bit of worry. You know, I didn't want to be like, oh. I mean, it worked sometimes, but other times they were like, we can't do that. It's not safe, you know, blah, 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 health and safety and all that jazz. So I actually just cut down my meat. And um, I did manage to get <laughs> like 25, I oh know it was a 5 kg block of cheese. It's gigantic. And I put it in the freezer and it was brilliant. And it was wrapped in plastic originally, but it was better than having like, lots of little bits of plastic you know it was a bulk bulk item and then um yeah so that was really useful the freezer is really really useful <laughs> um and then I found this place that delivered milk in glass bottles to my door and then I found out I wasn't really drinking that much so I just reduced down the the milk ratio and then they also delivered orange juice which was my absolute favorite thing in the world um, so that was Dairy Crest in the UK, if anyone's interested. They're a fabulous company and they're thinking of cutting out the glass bottles. So we need to buy them because... <laughs> so they, 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 they come and they take the bottles away again. It's like those old fashioned dairy deliveries, you know? Um, and they just refill the same bottles like a hundred times. So that's kind of where I was for about a year and I was loving it I loved it and then I was coming up to traveling and I was like getting quite anxious about the whole thing because I was like I don't think I'm going to be able to do it you know I'm, I'm not going to be able to just buy vegetables and just live off fruit uh, you know I am and I can't really afford to eat out all the time which is another way you know you, you'd have a sit-in meal instead of a takeaway meal you know um, so I kind of calmed down on the zero waste when I was traveling and then I was traveling around Vietnam and I um, saw the dogs being cooked on the street and I was like wait a second <laughs> that's horrible and I had I had stopped eating a lot of meat at that stage I kind of just sat down and eat it in a restaurant or whatever but then I was like oh hang on <laughs> wait a second so I became a vegetarian and I did some research and it turns out the most ecological thing that people can do for the planet is to stop eating meat. And that led on to me actually stopping eating cheese and dairy as well. Um, and eggs. So I won't get into the ethics of that, but it was just, I did it mainly for environmental reasons. And also because I couldn't manage to keep to zero waste and I was feeling terribly guilty about that. Just while I was traveling, I didn't, I couldn't gather the amount of things that I needed. I didn't have a kitchen where I could cook stuff for myself. I didn't have all of this kind of stuff to, that you need to support a zero waste lifestyle. And um, now that I'm living in Sydney, I could be doing that. I feel like I am trying, but I'm not trying as hard as I could. However, the fact that I don't eat meat reduces the amount of environmental impact I have. So I feel like it's kind of a trade off but tofu comes in plastic packaging and so does like the vegan cheeses that I have and all of that stuff and I'm like <sighs> one day <laughs> one day I'm going to get to the stage where I can have everything on land and I can make my own 
things and I have my own little sheepy in the back garden and I'll be able to brush him and get the wool off and spin it myself and blah 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 but um yeah somebody asked me a question about oh please tell me more about your zero waste so I just I decided I'd mention it a little bit one really amazing thing about zero waste is this company called who gives a crap dot com <laughs> And I first saw it on Yarnder Woman's podcast. She got a, um, or it was her Instagram account, and she got a delivery from this company. And I was like, I gotta look into this. It's so funny. So I was finding it quite difficult to get toilet paper that wasn't wrapped in plastic. Toilet paper is one of the things that I can't really give up. Not yet. <laughs> That's beyond the pale. But um, <laughs> I got a delivery. Of 24 rolls of uh, toilet paper and a uh, kitchen kitchen roll and it's made out of uh it's made out of bamboo waste i think uh it's not it's an it's not a super luxury but it's not a super basic either and it's also uh, one of the most densely rolled packages of roll toilet paper i've ever seen it's got twice as much as any toilet paper that i've seen and that i use in the in the shops but it's, it's got this really cool paper and it's got like lots of different ones who gives a crap uh good for your bum great for the world 50 percent of our profits are donated to water aid uh, it's 100 percent recycled uh it's got no chlorine eye it's a three ply no chlorine inks dyes or scents and also they hang on i gotta open it because it's got more in here isn't that paper so cute? Uh, when it comes to saving the planet, we're on a roll. Honey! That's because we only use 100% recycled fibres in our toilet paper to save on trees, water and landfill. We believe that the need to wipe shouldn't mean we wipe out the planet. Boom. So we lower our reliance on natural resources even further. We transport in recyclable cardboard boxes and wrap our product in tissue paper instead of plastic to keep our footprint super light. I love it. Love it a lot. Tested on bottoms. <laughs> oh, they're all different. We don't test anything but the finest human bottoms. <laughs> Why give a crap? Oh, tell us. Tell us. At present, 2.5 billion people across the world don't have access to a toilet. That's 40% of the global population. Oh my God. But diarrhea-related diseases fill over half of sub-Saharan hospital beds, as well as killing 2,000 children under five every day. We think that's pretty crap. I agree. Crap. Which is why we give 50% of our profits to water aid to build toilets and improve sanitation in the developing world. Just by buying this pack, you're already helping. So thank you. No problem. I feel like a superhero. So cute. I'm going to put them up here so you can see them. Who gives that crap? I do. And this one is my favorite, the emergency roll. That's why it's in red. So this roll should only ever be open in a running out of toilet paper emergency. By this we mean you should only use it when you are really caught short. Not when you need extra napkins for your dinner party or have to wrap up some delicate pottery. If you do this, this if you do use this roll in these situations, you will kick yourself when you need it in an emergency it was intended for, or someone else will kick you for the same reason. So place it somewhere you can easily reach from your toilet and then go check your emergency napkin supply as well. <laughs> it's so cute and this one is at the end of the box <laughs> and so it has like how to reorder on the other side it's genius genius um i really really like it and the delivery was free in australia um i think it was i can't remember how much it was like 20 24 dollars and then i also got some kitchen rolls so it came up to 48 dollars for I think there's 24 rolls in there and each one of these rolls is twice as much as any other one so you're effectively getting 48 rolls um for you know it's a really good price and it's a really good cause and i love it and it's zero waste because i can recycle these paper things i've also been uh, freezing my compost in the freezer because I don't have access to a garden so I can't set up my own composting so I deliver my compost once uh, maybe once every two weeks to um, a sustainable Sydney sustainability center 
which is just down the road on a bus. So I just <laughs> pack it all in my rubbish up and, and it's frozen, so it doesn't smell or anything. And um, I just they just dump it into their worm farm and they say, thank you very much. We need lots of organic stuff. Um, I also use a bamboo toothbrush and I use um, bamboo, bamboo and cotton earbuds because I'm addicted to earbuds. I can't stop. Sorry. <laughs> Um, if anybody is interested, I'm going to open up, um, uh, I'm going to open up one of those Ask Me Anything threads in my Ravelry page, which you can find by searching Babbles Traveling Yarns in Ravelry. Um, yes. So I'm going to say goodbye right about now. Um, I am thinking, do I have anything else to say? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't think so. I actually do. I could talk for ages about zero waste. If you want to hear more about it, do please let me know. Um, and I'll try my best to give you some answers and some resources to help you think about that. And the most important thing is not to beat yourself up when you start, because I started getting very depressed when I started because I just felt like it was impossible. Um, but every step that I made, every change that I made did have did make a difference. So um, I don't want to make anybody feel guilty um, when I talk about zero waste and trying to reduce your environmental impact. Um, that is not my intention at all. I have a massive issue with guilt <laughs> growing up as a Catholic in Ireland. It's how we function. It might be in the blood. Um, so I do not want to put any of that pressure on anybody. But if you are interested in reducing your uh, footprint, um, please send me a message or if or pop over to the Ravelry thread. Or um, and if anybody has any direct questions, I can either answer them there or um, have a little section at the end of my podcast every time so I can focus on different sections because it is a huge, huge topic. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do today. Yes, I've got I've, I've got my day planned out. Uh, I'm going to edit this and then do some laundry and get back to work <laughs> and do some colouring. So I'm going to say goodbye again <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for tuning in. If you tune in every week, I love you. <laughs> if it's your first time tuning in, I love you anyway. Um, <laughs> um, thank you so much for stopping by if it is your first time. Um, I do a lot more traveling in the first couple of episodes and I hope to be doing a lot more traveling soon. Um, in the new year as well because I'm going to be going back to Perth and maybe going somewhere else after that I'm trying to sort out some local local positions so yes I love you lots and have a great week <laughs>